Hello and welcome to another Flux tutorial. Today, we're diving into an essential aspect of PCB design, ground nets. We start with a basic example of a single ground net and then progress to more complex scenarios of multiple grounds. We walk you through managing copper fields and via stitching on each case. So let's get right into it. So let's start with a very basic example. Here, we just have a battery holder and a resistor. Going to the PCB layout, we'll see both footprints. If you go to the layer menu and click on the drop a like icon, we'll see that nothing happens. There's no copper being shown. Also, to set the stage, if we take a look here in the objects tree, we see that we have two nets, net one and net two. These are the two nets that we have, net one and net two. And let's see what happens when we drop a ground component here on the canvas. If we go to the PCB layout, we see that one of the air wires has just disappeared. And that's because when we go to the layer menu and click again on the drop like icon, we'll see that the whole copper field has been connected. So whenever you add a ground component to your canvas, Flux will automatically create a copper field connected to that ground net in your PCB layout. We can also see here on the objects tree that there's a unique net called ground. And if we expand that ground net, we'll see that there's a field and a bunch of vias. Each one of these vias is one of the stitching vias that has been automatically added. So let's now see how we can configure the copper field and the ground vias. Keep in mind that we have a full tutorial on copper fields that I've just linked out in the description, but we just covered the basics here. There are two rules in Flux that you need to use in order to configure the ground fields. If we select the ground net and go to the layer rules, let's add these two rules that we need to configure. The first one is called connected layers. And the second one is called via stitching density. Then the connected layer rule manages on which layers is the copper field enabled. So for example, by default, it's enabled on every layer, but we can click on this layer and for example, select only bottom. In that case, the copper field will only be connected to the bottom layer. If you want to disable the ground field completely, just click on the layer and leave it empty. Something similar happens with the via stitching. So let's disable this rule and have all our via back. The field stitch intensity rule manages how many vias you have for a specific unit of length. So for example, if I put 10 millimeters, I'm gonna have one via stitching every 10 millimeters. That goes both on X and Y directions. If for example, I want to disable via stitching completely, I will just leave the rule empty. So that basically covers the whole case for a single ground net. Now let's see what happens when you wanna have multiple grounds. For example, when you have connectors that have a ground shield or things like that. Let's take a look at a more complex example. In this case, we have two USB-C connectors. We want to keep the shield ground separate to our actual circuit ground. The way to do that is by using a component called ground portal. So let's drop this component to our canvas and see how it works. You can see that one of the components is called ground one and the other one is called ground two. So if I connect ground one to the first connector and ground two to the second connector, just by selecting the ground, I can see that this ground is not connected to this ground. The way to connect these grounds together is to have the ground portals be called exactly the same. In this case, let's call this one shield and this other one shield as well. Now immediately, this ground is connected to this ground, but we can see that none of them are actually connected to the internal ground of our circuit. This is exactly what we wanted. Now we're going to discuss why exactly that happens. So feel free to just keep this section and go straight for the copper field for multiple grounds if you're not interested. The main difference between this ground component and these other ground portals is a property called part type. When we select this ground, we can see that it has a part type property called ground. And clicking on these components, it has a part type property called portal. There can only be one component in your design with the part type property called ground. And that's the component that Flux uses to automatically detect that there's a ground added to your project and create the copper field and the VS stitching. For the other part type called portal, Flux will just connect every net connected to a portal to another portal that has the exact same name. This essentially works the exact same way as if I just type portal and then grab one of these net portals and drag it into our canvas. The only difference between this portal and this portal is just a symbol. In this case, the symbol is just a straight line, and this one, it resembles a ground symbol. So you could create other portal that has any other ground symbol, for example, one of those earth-like symbols or things like that. 
I'm going to leave a tutorial down in the description where we teach you how to create custom symbols for any component, including portals. So now let's go see how our copperfield is behaving in this scenario. As we can see, nothing really changed. And that's because the two ground components that we just added are part type portal and not part type ground. Just to emphasize, automatic ground fields and VS teaching are dictated by components with a part type ground and not a part type portal. So what happens, for example, if you want to have the internal ground on the first layer and the shield ground on the second layer, how do we do that? The first thing we need to do is select the ground net and make sure that the connecting layer rules is only set to top. Now we need to find the net connected to our shields. In this case, if we click on net four, we see that the components connected to it are the shield pins and J2. This is exactly what we're looking for. It is a good idea to just teach the designator and call it shield exactly the same as we call the portal, so it's easier to identify it. Now, the same way that we did with the ground net, we go to the shield net, add a new obsolete specific rule called connected layers. And in this case, we just put it to mid layer one, for example. If we enable the layers for mid layer one, we'll see that our ground net has been connected to the shield. Lastly, there's another interesting scenario that you might want to know about. For example, what happens if we put two nets with copper fields on the same layers? So let's see how that works. Let's go back to our shield net and then change the mid layer one for top layer. Now in this case, Flux doesn't know how to complete the whole layer with two fields at the same time. So what happens is that you get a warning here called both layers with multiple copper fields saying that in the top layer, you have copper fields for the ground net and the shield net. And that's it for today. You should now be able to handle every single ground scenario, from single grounds to multiple grounds, and how to configure the copper fields and VS teaching for both scenarios. So see you in the next one.